Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making delicious black bottom cupcakes. So let's get started. First off, set your oven to 350. We're gonna be making our cheesecake filling first. I want six ounces of very soft room temperature cream cheese, just like this, into a big bowl. I'm using a hand mixer today, but you could definitely use your stand mixer with paddle attachment if you want. To sweeten things up, I'm adding a quarter cup of granulated sugar. And if you haven't had a black bottom cupcake before, oh my gosh, I don't know about the name, but they are delicious, like cheesecake brownies, basically. If I was naming them, I would have called them cheesecake brownie bites. But I don't have that power. <laughs> Not yet. We're gonna cream this up on medium until it's smooth. I don't wanna beat a ton of air into it. It's really just to work the sugar in really well. You also wanna make sure there's no lumps of cream cheese hanging around. Honestly, if I was making this recipe, which I am, I would just warm the cream cheese up in the microwave on half power, just like you would soften butter. So doing that's gonna give you a really nice consistency and ensure there's no like random lump of unsweetened cream cheese hanging around. So this holds together. I'm gonna to add one room temperature egg right in, as well as a healthy pinch or about an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Salt's gonna give you some balance, and if you don't add it to your desserts, they oftentimes just read flat, and you don't taste as much of all the delicious ingredients. I'm gonna mix this on medium until it's well combined. Now, you don't want any pool of egg hanging around. That would not be delicious. Grab a spatula and just scrape the bowl down. You can probably work this together without mixing it again, but I just wanna make sure there's no streaks of unmixed nonsense hanging around. This will especially be true if you're using a stand mixer because this isn't a lot of material and the stand mixer is not as happy when it's mixing less. And now I want half a cup of mini chocolate chips. The big chocolate chips are just too large for these cupcakes, so the minis will do just fine. If you don't have them, just use some chopped chocolate. It's a very satisfying noise. All right, stir those so they're well distributed. And we're gonna set this aside and get to our chocolate portion. For that brownie portion on the bottom, we're gonna have another bowl out. I'm gonna sift things because there's cocoa powder involved. And I want 90 grams or three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour. I've said it before and I'll say it again, using a scale is gonna give you the best results ever. If you've ever had something where you follow the directions perfectly, but you get like a bready or dense baked good, probably too much flour, and it's really easy to avoid with a scale. Now I want half a cup or 100 grams of granulated sugar. This is gonna give us a very soft cake as well. The sugar softens things up and changes the consistency in addition to sweetening. I also want a quarter cup of cocoa powder. That's 25 grams. This is natural cocoa powder, by the way. It's not Dutch processed. You could use either, but here, the acid in the cocoa powder is gonna help react with the baking soda we're adding right now. Specifically, we're adding half a teaspoon of baking soda. Baking powder has all the ingredients to react and leaven things. Baking soda needs an acid to help reach its full potential. One quarter teaspoon of salt, just a little bit, is gonna give us some nice contrast. Now it's time to sift this together. You really always want to sift cocoa powder out. It's just so lumpy. It's the fat in it that's holding it all together. If this scale is done, I'm gonna grab a whisk. Just bring it together. This gets set aside. One more thing to mix up and that's the wet ingredients. The wet ingredients are pretty cool. Half a cup of water. I always love that water it can do some magic in a recipe because you think you have to use milk or cream, but no, it'll be nice and rich and you're gonna love it. A quarter cup of vegetable oil. If you wanted to, you could use really any oil you like. Avocado oil, flaxseed oil, anything that's mild will work well. For leavening, I'm helping the baking soda out with vinegar. This acid will react with the baking soda and make things nice and light. I want one and a half teaspoons. Finally, this is totally optional, but I just love a kiss of vanilla. So just half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. If you don't want to do it, you can skip it, or you could use a little bit of coffee or any other flavor you want to add an undertone of. Give it a mix. Now we're gonna pour the wet into the dry. Stir this together until it's just combined. Don't overmix. Smells so chocolatey and amazing. And I just love the vibe of these cupcakes. You wouldn't expect them to be as good as they are. They're just like chocolate cheesecake bites that come together in a few minutes. 
I want you to see that this is like a watery, like it's not a really thick batter, but magic's gonna happen in the oven. My chocolate batter is ready. The cheesecake mixture is ready. And now we're gonna grab, grab with grace your uh, cupcake tin and just line it with papers. Now we're gonna divide the chocolate batter evenly into the cupcake papers. You'll see how full they get, not gonna be totally full. This is a tiny scoop for babies. I want a big one. That's more like it. <laughs> if you wanted to, you could add so many different things to this, that would be really nice. I am kind of random and might like some toasted pecan bits in there. But you could add like little mini M&Ms for color into the cheesecake mixture or over the top. To like anything you want. You let me know if you would do something extra for these, like maybe some peanut butter. I kind of think these cupcakes are named just because of the way they look. It's like a cheesecake topping with a black, like delicious brownie base, black bottomed cupcakes. But if you know exactly where they're from, please let me know. Maybe they're from a state fair or something or someone who won a recipe contest from the fifties or something like that. Now we're going to spoon the cheesecake mixture right on top of the chocolate. I'm using a small triggered scoop, but you can just use a spoon. The one thing I want to say, is trying to get like a little plop in the middle as opposed to getting it messy. You wanna see that division of the two batters. Some people call these tuxedo cupcakes. It's pretty cute. It kind of reminds me of the uh, tuxedo chocolate covered strawberries I make, but totally different. Okay, my batter is all gone and that means it's time for these guys to go into the oven. 350 for however long, I don't know. 350 for 16 to 18 minutes. You can tell when they're done because the centers will be set. Or until a skewer comes out clean from the middle and the cream cheese topping is set. In you go. Fresh out of the oven and just cool enough to eat. Look at this. Cheesecake and brownie married together. It's a perfect match. That's almost a molten chocolate lava cake with cheesecake mixed in. It is so good. You've got to try this recipe. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe. And if you like this video, check out my chocolate playlist.